Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. We're looking at the final exercises of grade four. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information in the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of hints and tips on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually in the exam room on exam day. And so if you visit SharonBill.com, it's all there for you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really fab. And please subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And so let's turn now to page 47. We're looking at exercise three in the general exercises. And um, just like the previous exercises, this will draw into remembrance lots of information relating back as far as grade one. It's all of grade one, grade two, grade three, plus the new information that you've covered in grade four. And so, I suggest that you use this as a revision exercise just to revisit some old topics and so I'm going to give you some um, references so you know where to refer back to and then I suggest you press pause, find the answers that you need to, have a go at answering all of these questions and then come back into the video and we'll work through this together to check that you've got them correct. It doesn't matter if you make some mistakes. Always write in pencil. We're always writing in pencil. I've got a nice sharp mechanical pencil. Just keep your pencil sharp. A trusty eraser to hand and you perhaps need a ruler as well. And so let's just glance through this and I'll give you some reference points and then we can get cracking. So we're referring to this section of music. All the questions will relate to this. They're asking us what time the music is in. And so you'll find this first discussed in grade two, section B. Here we have a, an Italian performance direction. You'll find that again in grade two, section I. Intervals, we um, come across this most recently in grade four, section H. The melody as written above is played by one of these instruments so we've got to think what instrument it is and give a reason why there are some clues on the music that will help you and you'll find the clues and the answers to those clues in grade four section L next question this is just a little observational question really we need to look and find some similarities between those bars just some general similarities so eyes peeled, pair of glasses there, keep your eyes peeled. We have this sign here and this was first, this performance direction was mentioned in grade two, section I. One of the accidentals that the composer has included is not strictly necessary so you've just got to keep your eyes peeled there and see what's perhaps a little bit redundant in the example above circle every appearance of this rhythm and so there we go um, actually I've just noticed we need to name the note here so let me just help you find that in, in G you'll find that answer um, in the alto clef which is also in this book as well so perhaps just there you need to refer to um i think it's section b let me just check that just missed that yeah um there we go oh no i think i'm making bits up carry on ignore me okay let's carry on what are the reasons for thinking that climax of this melody occurs in bar 13? So we need just a little bit of observation looking at the performance directions. 
and we've got um, grade one Q will also give us a clue and uh, 4L you'll find some clues there rewrite bars 1 to 7 in the treble clef while keeping the pitch the same so that's going to be grade 4B to help you there righty ho I think that's enough to get you started and so um, have a go at that and then re-access into the video and we'll work through this together I hope you've had a go and so let's crack on with this so describe what kind of time the music is in so let's look at our time signature this is the time signature this is the sort of this the vernacular is split common time it's called a la breve and it represents two over two there and so it's simple time and it's duple we're in groups of two and there are two main beats per bar Next one, what is Espress short for? It's short for Espressivo, the Italian word. And that is um, what describes uh, expressively is what it means. So I suppose you could say it in a little bit uh, better sentence structure, you could say with expression. Either of those would cover it really. What's the interval between the first two notes? Well, we're in alto clef, and so we need to just figure out what notes they are. So C, D, E, that's an F, that's a B. Remember, it's a B flat because of your key signature. So we've got F to B flat, which is a perfect fourth. You need both of those just fourth wouldn't do now we need to describe it fully okay moving on the melody as written above is played by one of these instruments it's either piano violin viola cello well we know straight away it's for viola because it's in the alto clef it can't be piano because the piano would be in two clefs um, and we also know as well it, it's it's um, a string instrument, we know it's got bowing marks, but it can't be the cello because it's in the wrong clef. So there we go, we need to say it's viola. And we need to easily just answer it by saying viola uses alto clef. That will answer it all in one go. Okay, in what ways are bars five and six similar let's have a look so we are descending by step however there's more similarity than that we descend by step we have the same articulation marks and we have the same dynamic marks as well so the similarities are that they descend by step. We have the same dynamic markings. And we have the same articulation markings. Articulation is showing this slur and this tenuto mark. There we go, so there's three similarities there. What does this sign that we just referred to here mean? And it means a slight pressure. It's not enough to be an accent mark, it's a slight pressure. And it also usually means it's slightly detached as well. So it's not enough to be accent or staccato, but there's a slight pressure and it's also uh, detached slightly as well. There we go. One of the accidentals that the composer has included is not strictly necessary. So let's look at the accidentals. So we've got a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flats. Here, C, E, that's a G flat, so he obviously wants us to change the pitch there. There we've got a 
C sharp, he wants us to change the pitch there. Um, and then here, we've got a C D natural. Now here, we've got a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flats. There's no need for that D natural because it's already a D natural. There's no need to cancel anything. And so really, that's the one that we don't need. So it's in bar nine and it's a D natural. I will, you could just say D, but I would put D natural because then you've also explained the accidental sign as well. So here we go, a little bit of observation. I think that's the one where I was saying you need alto clef as well. There we go, oh well, we got there in the end. So circle every appearance of this rhythm. So we're looking for a tie over a bar that ties into a crotchet, 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 crotchet. So we've got a bar full of quarter notes or crotchets, but with a tie over the bar line. So we need to look for that every time. What comes before it is irrelevant, it's just that last bit. So we can see here in bar two, here in bar four, no tie, bar eight, bar ten, bar twelve. It doesn't matter that the notes are doing different things, it's the tie and the note values, no more ties. There we go, okay, carrying on. What reasons are there for thinking that the climax of the melody occurs in bar 13? Now here there's just a, a sort of a subtle observation. They're asking here for reasons which suggests there's going to be more than one. So bar 13, let's have a look. Now the first one is obvious. I think we can see that we've got to the loudest dynamic in the piece. Up until now, it's only really been forte. We've started at forte. We've got quieter, but then we've got louder again. So we haven't really gone beyond that forte until here, where it's specifically asked us to go double F. So that's the first observation. The second one is a bit trickier to grasp, but once you've sort of understood it, um, it's easy to remember for future reference. Here, the instrument has got to the highest point in the pitch. The pitch is at the highest of the whole piece. So not have we only got to the loudest part, we've got to the highest part, which sort of brings a sense of um, the culmination you know, we've reached sort of the pivotal climax of the piece. And so there are two answers. So the dynamics are at the loudest. And then another one is that the pitch is at the highest. There we go. And then the last question, we're making great progress here is asking us, rewrite bars one to seven in the treble clef whilst keeping the pitch the same. So just be careful we don't jump octaves. Remember to include clef, key signature and time signature. So we just need to make sure it sounds exactly the same, but we're now in a different clef. Unfortunately, we've got to jump from the top of the page to the bottom. Remember in the exam, the blank stave will be conveniently positioned underneath. So I know we've got to get seven bars, so let's just get that mapped out straight away because it's easy to get carried away and if you kind of spread your writing as you're thinking, you run out of space. So we need seven bars and we're going to go from here to here, so let's just make sure we know where we're going. So that last bar doesn't require much space. Can have a little bars there. Oh, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm trying to give a little bit more space at the beginning because we've got more information to put here because we need the clef, which is now the treble clef. The key signature, which is three flats, B flats, E flats, A flats. The time signature, there's our a la breve time signature rest and then we're ready to start thinking about the notes i'm also going to just go the extra mile so we don't get loose marks for just putting all the extra details if you were doing a normal copying of an extract you put all the other information so i'm just going to do that anyway and then I'm just going to make sure, in fact, just so we don't get lost, bars one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to do that just to help. So, bar four has got a crescendo at the end of it, diminuendo, diminuendo, and then well, I can just sort of Concentrate on the thinking without worrying about it. So we already worked out the first note when we were answering the interval. So we know that that's an F above middle C. So that will get us started nicely. So we need the F. And then you'll notice one, three, four, up to the B flat. The key signature will deal with that B flat. That will tie over and then we can see down a step, third step. So I'm just going to copy these down now. So down a step, down a third, down a step, back next door. So we can see we should be on the same notes here, which we are. Now we'll tie that in a second and then we're going to go down a third up next door back down again and you can see we should be on those same two notes which are next to the middle C so there's the middle C there's the D and you can see we're referring back to that so bar five now, C, E, G flat we need, C, E, G flat is there, and then we're just coming down in step for this bar, so down in step, and we're on, we've ended on the D above middle C, so that's good. The next bar takes us up a third, so C, D, E, F should take us back to where we started. Up a third takes us to F, which is where we started, so we can double check we've not gone wrong. And then down in step again. So we're just double checking. So we should now be on middle C. There we go. And then the last one is taken as one, three, four, back to the F. So up a fourth, back to the F, and that's correct. So now we've just got to rearrange the stems because we were at a different position on the stave. So we're going to have to just alter the way the stems go. I'm going to have that one going down, I think. Tie. And then we also need a slur to that second note. Stems. Tie. Stems. Um, we need a slur there. And then Stems, we need, oh, we need the tenuto marks as well. So tenuto mark, 
slip finishing with that and we'll just add the tie to show that it's going to carry on let's just double check we've got everything we need another slur there miss that one need another slur there that's it now that's it all the details are there so just take your time and make sure you copy everything accurately over fab i do hope that's been helpful to you if you feel like you're a little bit rusty on any of those topics just go back to the relevant videos and refresh your memory if you can give me a like that'd be really great and please subscribe to my channel to keep updated please visit sharonbill.com and make use of all the information there thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye